very iconic building. And Chris has been taking some photographs. Hey Chris. Oh, hey Roger, how's it going? Not bad, yourself? Not bad at all, thanks. I'm just taking in this beautiful London architecture right outside the uh, St Pancras and Renaissance Hotel here. Excellent. And how about any tips for our viewers who want to do something similar? Of course, yeah, fantastic. I mean, when it comes to London architecture, you're, you're spoiled for choice, really. There's so many beautiful buildings which have a lot of uh, old-fashioned features like this one. I mean, just have a look at the place. It's absolutely stunning. Um, there goes into tip number one. You want to try and get a few pictures where you're kind of zoomed in on uh, one particular part of the building so you can really capture all of the, uh, the fine details uh, of the building there. Uh, on top of that, you do still want to get um, one or two which are taken, trying to get the, uh, the building as a whole in as well. And that's where tip number two comes into it. To try and get the whole building, you might notice here what I'm using. I'm using a 16 millimeter uh, lens. Mm -hmm. um, it's really part of the industry standard uh, in what we do, that you need a wide angle lens. Right. Something that can capture everything all in one frame, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and get it at the right angle to do so as well, really. Got it, got it. And how do you capture it? Like, what's the best way? <clears throat> of course. So every, every property is different. Every, um, every building is different. For this one in particular, I mean, it's just such a huge building. It's a mammoth. So what you really want to do is you want to get down nice and low. The lower you can get, uh, the more you got that angle. And you're just going to have this menacing face in front of you. If you can do that, it's just going to be fantastic. And I can see today, obviously, we've got a lovely day. Yeah, I guess depending on the season, you can get different, um, you know, different effects and different, uh, you know, outcomes from from the pictures depending on the season oh, in London. Definitely. definitely. I mean, you want to really play into whatever season you got. Right now, we've got a beautiful summer's day. Uh, if I was doing this in autumn, then I'd have some uh, some real undertones of uh, uh, kind of orange and yellow coming in. There might be a few. Uh, a few fallen leaves on the ground. You can change the white balance on your camera uh, right. to really play into them orange undertones as much as possible and give that sort of autumn feel. If it was spring, you might have some beautiful flowers in there, some, some cherry blossoms even or something like that. Uh, and again, you, you can change the white balance to play into uh, the color of the season. Got it, got it, excellent. One final how about thing. making sure that hmm. everything's clear in front of you? That's a good one. You might notice I got this picture here. I'll show you one I got earlier. Uh, absolutely smashing picture I got. Uh, I was really excited about this one and then just to press the shutter, Mr. Taxi here decides to come drive around in front of me. Uh, it's really important to uh, have the patience. You gotta sit down and take the time to wait until the perfect uh, opportunity comes. And it might take a while, it might not always be there, but patience is key. Uh, don't rush it, take your time. And if you do that, you're just gonna get some beautiful pictures. Brilliant, brilliant tips, I would say. Fantastic. Thanks for that. You're welcome.